EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut, home of the Vans RV12 build. You know, we spend most of our effort in these build videos talking about the initial assembly of an RV12. So we thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at what it takes to actually maintain and inspect a flying RV12. And that's exactly what's going on down here at the Spirit of Meriden Flight Club in Meriden, Connecticut. They've got a nicely assembled and flying RV12 that was put together by a talented group of builders at the uh, neighboring EAA 27 down here in Meriden. To find out what it takes to keep this RV12 flying, Let's talk to Mark Scott. So Mark, you put these airplanes together and you put them together and you put them together and then you finally get to fly them, but then you still got to inspect them and maintain them. And uh, this airplane, this is the third right. inspection. Third time, so we're getting good at it. Uh, we're flying the plane about 200 hours a year in the club. It's going well, uh, getting to know the plane, but uh, with any airplane, once a year, you take a lot of it apart. So you, you see the footage here is cowls are off, we actually take the horizontal tail off, wings are off. And the first thing we do is actually all starts with the paperwork. So probably the two most important things is uh, go to the manual, go to the maintenance manual, and there's a whole conditional checklist. So we go through that, we start right there. And then with the road tax engine, there's another one with the scheduled maintenance check. So we start there. So it's all prescripted, uh, so we don't miss anything. And that's where we start. Um, just to give you an idea of the flow is typically we, uh, we had uh, two people come in yesterday, members of the club, and we just start taking everything apart, we organize things, we put things away, and as we're taking it apart we're looking at things. Are they dirty? Is there anything warped? Anything broken? So right at the first bet we're looking for any anomalies, and fortunately we've, we've really seen none. And one by one we take things apart, and if we see anything of uh, importance we take a note of it. And, we, and so we have a bunch of notes, you know, right here, but things we've got to do, little things, cleaning, um, one of the big things we found is it's time to flip the tires. So the tires just get worn out. So you can flip the tires over so you can even the tread wear on them. I also found the brake pads had to get redone. So we take notes on that stuff and then make a plan when to do that, which is today for that stuff. So typically, we spend a lot of time up front with the engine compartment. So we've got all, all the cowl off, spinners off, we're inspecting the, uh, the, the bracketry and the uh, frames here. This is here to protect the pitot tube. And it's very easy to walk into. So we put a little <laughs> something on there for like a, a flag. Checking the prop, make sure it's all in good shape. We actually checked the track and the propeller, it looked pretty good. And we're just doing a general look. And you don't want to start cleaning the engine as soon as you get at it, because little weeps are like witness marks. So if there's um, oil or um, cooling fluid or exhaust gas, you actually want to see where that is, and you want to see if it's any different from the last time. So you don't necessarily start cleaning things right away. Anyhow, so we go through the whole maintenance checklist on the front. We actually take off the uh, top cowl here so we can get at the avionics compartment and make sure all the wires are where they're supposed to be. There's no chafing, nothing loose, and all that kind of stuff. On the inside, we actually take out the entire interior. And if you get a look in there, you can actually see we get down to all the controls. We take off the covers. Controls are very important. Again, make sure no cotter pins missing, no cable chafing, all the pulleys are moving well. And at some point after we inspect all the controls, we're going to go and lubricate all the controls with LPS lubricant to keep everything moving nice and smooth. We actually take out the back panel here so we can look down the tail cone as well. Landing gear always uh, takes a beating, so we take a good look at that. We're going to clean up all the brake dust off of that, check for all the um, uh, grease in the bearings. Those all look pretty good. Like I said, we worked on the tires, checked the tire pressure. A lot of things you'd kind of expect to do. Uh, back of the fuselage isn't a whole lot there. We do have the tail off. Uh, one of the things you do when you're doing a, a conditional inspection is always check for service bulletins and ADs on the aircraft. And there's a service bulletin on the RV-12s for stiffening up the counterbalance weight. So we had to take the tail off, and we're going to do that today. It's a relatively simple thing, but uh, really important to keep up with those service bulletins. So <clears throat> lots of takeoffs and landings in this airplane, and most airplanes have camber in their landing gear. So when the wheel comes down, it typically has some angle on it. In this case, this tire was landing on the outside here, which is a normal, normal way it lands. Well, it wears out the outside of the tire, and we've actually gone down past the depth of the tread. This side is fine. So what you can do is you can take the tire and flip it, and actually take the hub out and flip the tire. So now this tire is going to be on this side. It's going to land on the high tread part, and we're going to get double the life of the tire by starting to use this side. So when this side looks like that, then it's going to be time to replace the tire. Other thing we found is typically brake pads, they don't last forever. So this one's down just starting to touch the rivet, so it's time to replace this pad, and all the pads have about the same wear on them. Something pretty easy you can do yourself, as long as you've got the right tool. We have a rivet setting tool right here, so you can drill these out, 
and then you use this tool, put it in a vise, and follow the instructions, and you can very nicely bring that down and make these nice mushroom heads on here, and you can replace your brake pads in about an hour or so. So one thing that's important about plugs, plugs are a really good indicator of your health of your engine. You want to make sure they're kind of dry. They are dry. Not a lot of lead, not a lot of soot, not a lot of um, wet oil kind of look to it. You want them pretty much looking like this, kind of a tan color, a little bit dark. And you want to look at the electrodes and make sure they're not wearing badly. Sometimes the uh, center electrode will get rounded or the arm that comes up will show a lot of wear and lose its rectangularity. These are in pretty good shape. And this is actually heat transfer paste that you see on here, which is important for the RVs because it helps transfer the heat from the uh, plug to the cylinder head. So it acts more like a sink, and this is a good heat transfer agent. All right. So a couple things about the Rotax. This is a 912 ULS, so it's a carbureted engine. It's got dual carburetors. But it's got some unique features if you're not familiar with them. It is a combination air-cooled, water-cooled engine. So you'll see fins here for the air cooling, but up here at the hot end, it's water cooled. So there's actually a, a radiator on this side, pump on the bottom of the engine. These are all the water hoses that feed it, goes through a central distributor here, and then they're taken out through the bottom and it goes through the circuit. So these are things you, know, you have to watch for. And in fact, the water system, all these hoses have a five-year replacement life. So at the end of five years, you've got to get a whole package and put them all in. Um, other thing is the, um, the gearbox here, which is a little bit uh, unusual and also drives the fuel pump. So take a look at that. And one thing we've added is the Challenger oil filter, which is a, a uh, clean and reinstall, which is for us, because we're doing it probably five, six times a year, uh, makes life a lot easier if we don't have to go buy, uh, keep buying air filters or oil filters. So hope that uh, hopefully this gave you a good idea of uh, what's involved with an annual RV12. As lightweight and simple as the plane is, you still got all the major parts, landing gear, engine, propellers, avionics, so forth and so on. So the process on this airplane is similar to many other airplanes. The club is designed for people that kind of want to get into airplane ownership, but not jump in with both feet. So we have 10 members on the, air, on the aircraft. Well, they come and help do the maintenance. You can do the maintenance on an uh, ELSA. Uh, for the annual conditional inspection, you do have to have an A&P sign off. So we have one in the field. He did it last year, and he stops by each day, says, how's it going? What have you learned? We talk about things, and at the end, he'll come through, review the uh, paperwork, and uh, we'll be on our way. So uh, hopefully, let's give you some idea what all is involved, and uh, hopefully you'll be uh, doing that someday.